Post-COVID, there was a cultural shift where now people didn't think that they had to come in person, 70% of them choosing to either join online or watch a recording of the class. So really what we're trying to do today is to adapt to the best of both worlds. We want all the best of digital interactivity at the front of a classroom where it's got the number of seats for the number of students that want to be there in the room and it gives a first class experience to all of the students who aren't. For the students who are joining online, they're getting this studio quality experience. They have a digital embodiment in the room. They're actually present and they feel engaged in the room. They feel present. In this room, there are 12 cameras running. The system automatically switches to the best camera angle or the best shot and the best microphone array depending on the particular thing that we're doing at the time. So if I'm presenting slides, it's on main camera. If I'm doing the digital linking, it's going to be screen sharing and taking the camera from the device that's looking at my face. If I'm computing from the podium, it's going to be the camera facing straight at that angle and a screen share. If the audience in the room asks a question, the system will automatically switch to the spatial microphone in the room and those remote students are going to be able to perfectly hear every single question and see the audience as well when they ask. There are good arguments to say that the experience for the online students is even better than the students in the room. Their faces are literally together on the back wall of the classroom layered behind the physical students. That screen is perforated. If they ask a question, the sound not only comes from the back of the room, but it comes from where their face is located on the back of the room. They can have a conversation in chat with their peers. That chat appears at the front of the room where the people in the room can read it without having a device open. They'll make comments, they'll use GIFs, they'll make jokes, and the people in the room will laugh. The actual user interface is more simple than a traditional teaching space. There's only six buttons, three devices, a camera and screen share for each. It couldn't be simpler. I think it's interesting to see when someone as innovative as Dr. Kellerman develops something in the higher ed context, because I think you can apply this digital space, this digital learning space he's designed. I think we could look at that for a range of uses in the future. It might be in a lecture room, like David's using it, or it could be for a commercial space or a commercial digital meeting area where you can share in all different forms and connect with one another equally. We designed this room in close partnership with best-in-class technology, and that includes Microsoft Teams and Surface, Steelcase, Crestron, and QSIS. This room is designed to be a Teams room, and it leverages all of the best features of that system. At the front stage, we've got three Surface devices. There is a Surface Hub 2S 85 inch that is based around presenting slides. There is a 50 inch, which is anthropometrically perfect for writing and drawing and doing mathematics. And there is a Surface Studio 2 Plus. It is perfect for basically doing PC stuff, whether it's showing CAD or doing programming, this sort of Digital first design is not only more engaging for the students, but it creates first class accessibility as well. It's been a long standing partnership with Microsoft and Dr. Kellerman. Uh, we love people who innovate, but people who innovate with purpose. And the great thing about Dr. Kellerman is he's about learning and he's about equity. So for us, it's a pleasure to always invest in the technology side to improve the learning experience.